In this lesson, we'll be talking about population model. So we'll be modeling population growth. So in the previous lesson, we have shown you how to um, solve differential equations so that you can be able to use the knowledge this side on population growth models. So the model that we're going to look at today, which I'll call model A, is the one that states that the population or the rate of change of population is proportional to the population at some point t. So this is what we must end up with. So we are going to prove this model. So before we start, let's say we have got this circle here that represents the population in a certain country, province, town, or whatsoever. So in this town over here, or in this region, there's some population at a specific time. And what is happening is that there are many factors which can cause population to either increase or to decrease. Things such as food security, diseases, viruses, you know, things like that. People going into the population, into, and others going out. So there are many things that can happen in a population, which can affect the population and cause it either increase or decrease. The only thing that we're going to focus on, or the main determining factor that we're going to focus on, will be the birth rate as well as the death rate. Okay, so the death rate I'll show it by capital B and the death rate by capital D. And after all these things happen, then there's going to be a new population, which is a population at time t plus some change in time. So remember that in the previous lessons or um, in one of the lessons on discrete changes, we said that um, the next step equal to the initial step. Plus the change, right? And we show that change can be anything. In this case, we are modeling population growth, so the change will be the change in population. And the two main factors which will be driving the change will be the birth rate and the death rate. So now, how can we rewrite this model? Well, I can say that the next population or the new population. is equal to the initial or the current population. Well, I'll just say existing. Right? The next population is called the existing one, and then plus some death minus some death. So this is the two main factors which we're going to be focusing on, which will cause population change. So I can write this. Well, I'm gonna write the next population. Well, I'm gonna say that P of t plus delta t, where this is representing a change in time that is too small, right? It's equal to the initial population p at time t plus the birth rate, which I'm going to write this as alpha multiplied by b, where this is the birth rate, multiplied by the existing population, and then multiplied by change in time. And I will explain what is happening here. Then I'm going to do the same thing for death rate. I'll put the second, the, I'll use a different proportionality constant, a negative beta, multiplied by the death rate, multiplied by the population at time t, then multiplied by small change in t. So what is happening over here, right? So now remember that when we show proportionality between two um, variables, we must show a proportionality constant, right? So in this case, I'm going to show proportionality between the birth and the population that is existing. Then I must show them with um, a proportionality constant alpha. Same applies to death rate and the, then the population. They are some, somewhat related, and I must show that they are related by the proportionality constant, right? And then I'm going to multiply by the small change in t to show that this is happening over some small change, right, in time. So there's a change in time. Um, as time goes, 
we have a dead rate and we've got dead rate. So now same applies to this where I said um the if I say to you that I is equal to um v over r. If I keep r as a constant in this case, then I can say that i is proportional to v. Well, what does this proportionality constant mean? Or this proportionality symbol? It means that i is equal to some constant, then multiply by v. So I can replace this with this, right? So this is how um, the same logic that we applied here. So we are trying to relate the population to the bed. At the same time, I'm trying to relate the population to the dead. Then what we must do is so we must relate them by using a proportionality constant. So I'm going to rewrite this in a neat way. I will take this to the left and then I divide both sides by delta t. If I do that, I'm going to have p of t plus delta t minus p of t divided by delta t is equal to what I'm left with. I'm only left with alpha multiplied by v then multiplied by p of t and then minus beta multiplied by d multiplied by p of t. Let me move this to the other side. Not other side, but yeah, to the right. Well, I've got a common factor of p of t is t, so I'm going to factor it out. Then this left hand side, I'm just going to write the way it is for now. And then here I'm going to have, okay, let me use this bracket alpha multiplied by b minus beta multiplied by d. Well, since we said that the time is the change is happening over small time periods, I can take the limit at delta t approach zero. So this t is too small that it's approaching zero. Well, if you check this side here, this is the same as taking this is the first principle, right? Um, remember that when you say f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, and then we take the limit as h go to zero, this is the same as taking the derivative of this function, which I can also write as d over the x. In this case, our variable is x, then multiply by f. I'm going to apply the same logic here, right? So if we do that, you can see that on the left hand side is the same as taking the, the derivative because we've got this limit side. So therefore, I can rewrite this thing as g dt of p of t is equal to p of t multiplied by, well, this is a number, right? Now let's see. Let's say I say 3 multiplied by 2, then I say minus 1 multiplied by 2. What I get is still a number, right? In this case, it's 6 minus 2, which is 4. Well, whatever that will be here is just a constant, which I can just put as k. And then next thing, um, for simplicity, I'm going to say let p of t be represented by the symbol p. Therefore, what I have now, I've got dp dt is equal to kp. Well, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cross multiply, right? Remember, I'm, I'm a separate variables. Everything with P, one side. So if I do that, I'm going to have um, DP equal to KP DT. I just cross multiplied, right? I divide both sides by P. P will cancel with P. What I'm left with is that 1 over P DP equal to what? K DT. Then I'm going to integrate both sides. If I do that, k is a constant, so I can just leave it out of the integral side. If I integrate 1 over p, I get lin p. And on the right hand side, k is a constant. If I integrate dt, I get t plus some um, constant a. Remember, it's an indefinite integral or an antiderivative, so I must always put the constant of integration. Then now I'm trying to solve for p and not lin p. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to exponentiate both sides so that I get rid of the lean. If I do that, I'm going to have p equal to e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of kt. Remember that a to the power of b plus c can be written as a to the power of b multiplied by a to the power of c, as long as the base is the same. 
I can just keep the base and add this exponent. So you can apply this law in reverse and you will click with that. Now, what is a constant? The power of a constant is that's another constant, right? So I can just replace this with a different constant, say b. Then this means that p is equal to b. Don't consider this b with the path. So this b is not the path, just a constant, right? So I'm just gonna call it b. Let me call it b1. Then multiplied by e to the power of kt. Well, this is now our model, right? So we're done. So now we have to be able to solve for this b1 since we don't know what it is. Well, how do we do this? Well, the population at some time t naught is equal to the initial population, which we don't know what it was, right? We don't know what was inside. Remember that the population includes um everything, right? Animals, humans, everything. So now at some time t equals to zero, no one can tell what they were. So let's say that this is the initial population. So now if I do that, I'm going to replace t with zero, then I replace p with p naught. And if I do that, I'm going to have p naught is equal to b1 multiplied by e to the power of k multiplied by zero. If I do that, this thing here is going to be one. Remember, any number to the power of zero is one. So this means that p naught is equal to b1. Well, this means that this constant over here is actually the initial population. So if I'm going to replace the b1 with p0. Then if I do that, I'm going to have p equal to p0 multiplied by e to the power of kt. And then if I do that, recall what we said, right? We said let p of t be equal to p. This means that when I see p, I can just replace it with p of t. Well, this means that p of t is equal to p naught multiplied by e to the power of kt. And this over here is our model. So this will be our model A. Now, what does this model suggest? Well, this model suggests that the only thing that is affecting population is death and birth. Nothing else, no mosquito, no, no viruses, no migration, no immigration, just death and birth. So what I'm going to do here is that let's interpret what this model is saying. Right. So it's saying that if we go here, if we come here, we have dp dt is equal to kp. Well, what does this mean? Remember we said I can replace k equal to k with the proportionality constant, right? So not proportional constant, but this um, proportionality sign. If I do that, I'm going to have dp dt is proportional to what? To p. And this is what we had at first. We said that this model suggests that the rate of change of the population with respect to time is proportional to the population that is existing. Right. This means that the rate and at which this one increase, even this one will increase, right? So if the population increase, even we expect to see a positive proportionality here, right? So now this side increases, side increases. So now this model, that's what it suggests. It suggests that the rate of change of the population is proportional to the existing population. And in the next um, lessons, we will consider the models where we have a carrying capacity. Remember there's something called a carrying capacity. Um, a population doesn't just increase forever. Well, it has some limit, right? Where um, if, it, it is, if it further increases without bounds, um, you might end up having problems of food, shelter, medication, and stuff, right? So now we, we, we must be limited. There's something called M, which we want to define as a carrying capacity. And we will see in the next lessons on how we can include the carrying capacity in our model. And thank you for watching.